Welcome back to CIUT 89.5 FM. My name is Razak Nurani and we are here at the Study and Go Abroad Fair. It is actually happening till 5 p.m. today, so feel free to drop by. Um, today I'm here with people from Germany and I'm here with John Paul and Florian. It's so nice to meet you both. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for having us. Awesome. I'd love to learn more about um, Germany and what kind of place it is, what kind of opportunities to study for students and just more about it. So sure. please, sure. yeah. Well, I mean, Germany has a, a myriad of opportunities and I can say, honestly, I work with an organization called the DAD, the German Academic Exchange Service, and our job here is to represent Germany's universities abroad. We are the world's largest provider of academic mobility funding. So we fund students from Canada who want to go to Germany for study, research, etc. Wow. And I can say in my time working with this organization that the interest in Germany particularly as a destination for degree studies, degree has, studies. has grown dramatically. So Germany okay. is now the third most popular destination worldwide for international students. Really? Yes, it's the number one non-English speaking destination and that's a relatively recent development and I can tell tell you why that is happening. Number one, the quality of education in Germany is extremely high. It has a strong yeah. reputation, well earned. Number two, Germany has opened itself up largely by offering a great number of English language degree programs. So that is what is driving interest in the mobility to that country. So that's, that's what we've seen. Um, in terms of what it has to offer, well, right now, I think there's over 1,400 English language degree programs on offer in Germany. So it's safe to say that regardless of what your field of interest is, you will probably find a study program there that dovetails with your interests. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's very interesting is the, the value proposition, I suppose. I see. Uh, you're getting a great education there, often at a very, very competitive cost. Germany invests vast numbers, vast amounts of money in its higher education system. And so even in programs where there are some tuition fees, these are typically far lower than you would expect to pay here in, in Canada, for instance. That's amazing. You know, um, it's so interesting to find out that Germany is top three in the world. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So the students are going there for degree studies, etc. But one of the ways that Germany is introducing itself to Canadians, young people, is through a youth mobility visa program. And my colleague here from the German consulate can tell you a little bit about that opportunity. Awesome. Yeah, and it really is an awesome program. So the Youth Mobility Agreement is aimed at young Canadians anywhere between 18 and 35 years old. And uh, what it is is a visa that's pretty easy to get. The requirements are quite low, and you can find out all about it on our consul's website. And this visa is valid for one year and comes with an open work permit. So as a young Canadian, if you're thinking like maybe doing a gap year between your undergrad and your grad or maybe after your grad, and uh, try, trying out working abroad, uh, maybe even you're, th you're thinking like there are some really interesting internships in my field in Germany. Uh, that's a great opportunity to just get this visa and have a chance for one year to try out living abroad and uh, just working there in one place or even in different places and maybe learn a little German on the side because for this visa you don't actually need to have any prior German law uh, knowledge and if you can find an employer, for example, who's like, uh, yeah, I'm hiring English speakers too, then it's a really great opportunity and kind of very, uh, very low threshold way of getting over and trying it out. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I can tell you, having worked in Germany as someone who's not a native speaker of German, there are all sorts of opportunities for native speakers of English to find their way in the German workplace, workforce. And what we frequently see is participants in this program also use that time to familiarize themselves with the study opportunities, right? So you can go, you can check out a variety of campuses, learn more about the, the degree pro programs that exist, and then they go back and do a, a degree there. So if you're interested in learning about certainly study options in Germany, what does Germany have on offer yeah. for people in my field? I would direct people to the Study in Germany web portal. So if you just Google search Study in Germany, uh, you'll find that. And that is a site with a wealth of information on can I study there, what can I study, what's student life like, 
Yeah. So those old questions that people have, you know, what is it like for students? Absolutely. And that's where you can find that information. Very interesting. You know, I'm I'm actually a student in Canada, and um, a big question that I that I'm thinking of, and I'm sure so many uh, people listening at home would be thinking of, is um, if we don't speak the English, uh, if we don't speak German uh, natively, as you said, um, would would it be difficult for us to navigate, or how would that sort of process be for a student who only speaks English or speaks a different language? Uh, would it be something that would be easy to sort of go about or how does someone sort of navigate and is it easier to make friendships? Uh, how does that work? Sure. So, yes, of course, the, the language of everyday life in Germany is German. So going to the country, even with a small amount, will help you have an easier experience. Yeah. We see many students go there every year with no German at all, study in English, and while they're there doing those studies, yeah. learning some German. So it, I, I would say it is important to want to learn the language and to make an effort to do it, but the, the system is increasingly set up to support and integrate students who are coming without those language skills initially. So there's no reason I understand the apprehension that might exist, and I can tell you that as someone who studied there as a young person myself, the situation has evolved quite dramatically. The German universities really are making increased efforts to help their international students find their feet and feel comfortable. So, yes, there will be a culturation process that needs to take place, yeah. but I think by and large most students are more than able to do that. So that hurdle, that language hurdle, is increasingly being removed. And I can also add maybe just for everyday life, uh, the vast majority of Germans, at least of my age or younger, I'm 37, uh, will have some familiarity with English. So you, uh, like uh, the people you will address and speak to, maybe they won't be super fluent or maybe they won't immediately address you in English, but if you talk to them in English, you will not have a problem uh, f finding people who are able to uh, speak to you and understand you. Exactly. That's awesome. You know, I, I want to know, so while we're on this interview, I actually want to know more about Germany as a place. Um, fun fact. Germany is one of my favorite uh, football teams, international football teams. I've been supporting them for a long time, since the Euro 2008. And uh, I remember when, um, you know, Michael Balak, th those days. And, um, you know, I'm, I've been a very big fan. So I'd like to, I've always wanted to go to Germany and watch a football match, um, whether it's Bayern Munich or whether it's even an international football game. So uh, as someone who's going, I wanted to ask, is it easy to get a visa? What would the process be like? And uh, yeah, do you have any recommendations for when I go to Germany or for anyone else who wants to visit Germany? So if you're a Canadian who wants to visit Germany, you don't actually need a visa. You can spend up to 90 days per year in Germany as a Canadian without uh, needing a visa. Uh, as, as long as it's just for visitors purposes obviously if you awesome. wanna, if you want to actually work then you need work from it but <laughs> I'm definitely going to go yeah, yeah. you know, just want to go and check out like uh, my, my, my team is Borussia Dortmund I'm a huge oh fan oh my uh, goodness okay tickets aren't always easy to get that might be your biggest hurdle but it is a it is an amazing I've heard that experience. the fans of Dortmund are next mm. level like oh my gosh I remember Marco Royce mm. uh, Mario Goetz uh, when Lewandowski yeah. was there, Mats Hummel, so yeah. It's, it's an amazing it's experience. Yeah. It is the most visited stadium in all of Europe. Uh, there is uh, no football stadium that has as many fans coming there every time. Yeah. Uh, the only challenge, like I said, it's it's very popular, so... You can't get to see it, it huh? Yeah, well, uh, for, for the high-level games, it's almost impossible, but uh, for a lot of kind of the lower-profile games, uh, it's still going to be close to sold out, but you, uh, you at least have a chance. I've seen videos of that stadium, the Borussia Dortmund Stadium, and it's filled with bright yellow. The atmosphere yeah. is electric, and I've never seen anything like that. Like, they're some of the most dedicated, brilliant fans in the world. So, hats off to you for, you know, it's so cool to meet a Borussia Dortmund fan um, in real life who's actually from Germany. Wow. Well, it's interesting to hear you talk about football. I can say, again, as someone who's been sort of affiliated with this type of work, um, we see interest spike whenever Germany's uh, national team does well. So we have our fingers crossed for this summer's European Championships. Um, that has a knock-on effect. It would also be helpful if there were a, 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 a German Formula One champion again, but we'll have to wait and see. If Fun fact, European, UEFA European Championship happening in Germany this summer. 
wait, uh, the the uh, Euro- UEFA Champions League final. No, no, the European Championship oh, of the, the national. The Euros, yeah. the Euros. Yeah, the Euros are taking place in Germany this summer. Oh wow! Okay, I'm I'm so excited. You know, I'm I'm I've always wanted to visit Germany, and I'd actually want to know as well. What are your favorite things about Germany? And for those listening at home, um, yeah, what do you recommend for them when they go to Germany? What what should they do? And um, yeah, what are your favorite things? Maybe top five favorite things? Top five? Oh, my goodness. Well, okay, so when I, I've spent, had the privilege of spending about three years of my life in Germany cumulatively in various parts of the country. One of the things that I like to stress is that there isn't one Germany, per se. Germany, like Canada, is very much a country of regions. And so you have very distinct differences in terms of architecture, landscape, dialect, cuisine, depending on which part of the country you're in. The challenge, the the great advantage of Germany is it's all in a very concentrated area. So if you're studying in, say, Hamburg, and you're interested in experiencing other approaches to German life, getting on a train for two hours can take you to a very distinct and different part of the country. So you can feel, and you can feel that there. So that's one of the things that I like to encourage people. People often look on the map and go, oh, well, if I study in Germany, then I can reach Paris, Milan, etc. All true, worthy, but don't neglect the parts, the regions of Germany, because you will find very distinct experiences there. So that's one of the things that I think that is so rich about Germany is that there's so much variety in such a small, concentrated space. That's one of the things I love about Germany. You can ask Florian. He's a native German, so he may have a different perspective on things. Yeah, uh, if there's one thing about uh, culinary life in Germany and German cuisine that I uh, want to stress, because it's something that's very rare to find. I've lived in a couple of different countries. I've lived in Canada a few times. I've uh, lived in Russia and Belarus as well. And one thing that's very native to Germany and hard to find anywhere is the amount and variety of bread uh, it, it is amazing there's a, there's a reason why you have German <laughs> I was bakers not running that. bakeries here uh, d- d- uh, German bread is ubiquitous uh, in almost any place you will have a baker within basically 500 meters of your uh, of your residence uh, where you uh, will you get your fresh b- bread and your fresh rolls every morning of so many types and colors and varieties and flavors uh, and it's not there's not many countries in the world that have it that's so cool, you know. Um, my best friend is actually from Frankfurt, and he always tells me about the, like, first he always tells me about the food, the amazing prices of food. He's like, oh my gosh, the price is like phenomenal. The you can get like bread for so cheap. You can go to like a pub and you know dine for so. It's such good prices. And my brother was actually in Berlin um, last summer, and my brother was telling me, I'm actually a music producer and DJ, and he was telling me about the music scene in Germany. So he said that it's very different in Berlin than it was in Munich. And uh, dude, uh, are you well versed on the, the music situation in Germany or <laughs> not really? Depends which music. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so Germany obviously has very strong club culture and yeah. Berlin is sort of the epicenter of that not I'm, just I'm a DJ yeah, so, exactly. yeah. so you know this so the Berlin nightlife is distinct yeah. and unique I don't think it's fair to compare it to the other German cities although they have their own scenes as well so yeah. Germany is a world leader but I mean in terms of the cultural field generally Germany produces a great number of exceptional filmmakers you know now that we have the streaming the digital universe if you go on any one of these streaming services you'll find now increasingly german content so yeah, so, yeah. And that, so this is all there and it's all accessible and again i can say in my work i do see people coming because of those things to germany right yeah they'll see a show they'll hear an artist that sort of thing and they want to find out more so it helps drive things that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, last question. Uh, we've had such an amazing interview today. Um, Florian and Jean-Paul, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure. What is your favorite food from Germany? We've spoken about cuisine so much, but we haven't asked you what your favorite food is. I know it's a difficult question, so you can give multiple answers. <laughs> well, it's tricky. Whenever I go back, I do seek out traditional German cooking. As I mentioned, this is a regional thing. So I enjoy um, foods from the region of Thuringia, which is uh, known for its forests and its wild game. So game stews, dumplings, that sort of thing. 
I think it's what the sort of thing that people would traditionally associate with Germany, hearty, yeah. deftige cuisine. Yeah, I can, I can definitely relate to that. For me, it's uh, kind of like there's a lot of different, uh, different fantastic meat dishes we have, but there's uh, fantastic meats you can get here. What I really love uh, getting in Germany or even making here is uh, we have a fantastic type of uh, red cabbage called the Apfelrotkohl, uh, red cabbage uh, boiled with apples. And one of my favorite side dishes is the Knödel, which is a, uh, a side dish made from... Uh, a stale bread uh, mixed with milk and eggs and uh, and boiled and uh, it's a very traditional dish that goes fantastic with duck with roast pork with roast beef uh, and gravy uh, yeah I'm getting hungry just from <laughs> listening to this. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I think I've had canoodle like once in my life, but I was way younger, so I don't remember how it tastes. I would love to try it. Um, well, thank you so much to the both of you for being here. Um, thank you for your time. It's been an amazing interview. Absolutely. Um, thank you for having us. Yes, thanks for the opportunity. Can I leave people with a website? Absolutely. So if you want to find out more about studying in Germany and scholarship programs that are available, I encourage you to visit daad-canada.ca or just Google DAAD Canada and that will lead you right to us. And if you want to check out uh, the website of the German embassy and consulates in Canada, then just check out www.canada.com. Diplo, D I P L O dot D E. Awesome. Is that the DJ Diplo? Uh, the DJ Diplo, that's hilarious. Well, thank you so much once again, John Paul and Florian. Um, we're here at the Study and Go Abroad Fair at CIU. Uh, we're with CIUT 89.5 FM. My name is Razak Narani, and it's going on till 5 p.m. See you soon.